Archfiend, the Desperate, Alice. There was once a sorceress called Alice. She was a brilliant sorceress and obeyed the code above all else. The life of a sorcerer is rifle with injustice. No matter how much they devote themselves to the code, every sorcerer meets the same fate. Souls of the sacrificed continue to accumulate in their right arms, and sooner or later they reach their limit. They met their doppelganger, their monstrous reflection. Having spent her entire life dedicated to the code, Alice realized in her twilight years she had little time left. There were two things remaining that she wanted to achieve in life. The first was the, was the discovery of a place called Wonderland. Wonderland, a realm that exists somewhere in this world, a land filled with dazzling sights, vanishing cat, an endless tea party, the card soldiers at play. Rumor had it those who wandered into Wonderland would be trapped there until they died. It was as if the realm wanted to keep them as playmates. Wonderland was said to be the result of one young girl succumbing to her desires. Alice set out in search of this dangerous land, and she meant to liberate it. It was her duty as a mother. The creator of Wonderland was none other than Alice's daughter. Alice never noticed how lonely her daughter was. Her daughter had only wanted her mother's attention. This desire was powerful enough to summon up a fantastic new land. When and where her daughter's monstrous transformation began, even her mother knew not. But ever was Alice haunted by a single thought. Alice had wished beyond all else to find her daughter before she became a monster herself. She used all the sorceress power, mighty as it was, to gather tidings of Wonderland. This was to lead her to the creation of a new form of magic, one ideal for the finding of things. Now she could convey her thoughts to those in distant lands. If she would but ask the question, where is Wonderland? Surely someone in this wide world would answer, but such great and powerful sorcery came with a terrible price. Conveying your words cost you your tongue. Sharing what you had seen cost you an eye. Though the application of this sorcery on the battlefield was limited, and it could only disseminate a scant amount of information at once, clever use would allow one to share all five senses with others. Alice's new sorcery would in later days come to be called Grimoire and be designated a Black Rite. And so it was Alice sacrificed her own tongue to appeal to people far and wide who knows of Wonderland and my daughter's whereabouts. She asked, but she did not stop there. Next to go was one of her eyes, for she conveyed a memory of her daughter's likeness across the wide world. But despite her great sacrifice, not one person did she find who could offer her a clue. To her great disappointment, she realized that she didn't have enough time left to find it. Alice looked for someone to carry on her duties in her stead. This was the second thing she wanted to achieve. She wanted to train a successor. The loss of her daughter only bolstered her desire for someone to inherit her aspirations. And she intended to entrust the seeking and liberation of her daughter to one who would follow in her footsteps. As she finally approached death, Alice saw a wondrous vessel before her. Alice knew what it was. It was none other than the sacred chalice. She had already knew what her wish was to be and offered up her body. 
she would create a space in which her successor would be trained, called Alice's Hollow. It was perfect for training sorcerers. In the hollow, the monsters Alice once fought would live again. Mock battles with monsters would take place there. The sorcerers found Alice's Hollow a very useful asset indeed for many years. It was said the very voice of Alice could be heard from its walls and ceiling. And there, she would initiate them into the secrets of Grimoire. The other sorceries she had devised. However, Alice herself, though transformed in this place, grew more and more disappointed. For none of the sorcerers who came there were deemed worthy of succeeding her, and not one believed in Wonderland. It was hardly surprising, really. After all, there was no record of Alice ever having had a daughter. It was a classic symptom for those who had become monsters, the greatest of injustice to strike a sorcerer down. That is, the meshing of the host's and prisoner's recollections, trapping the hapless sorcerer in an impossible memory, like being lost in an illusion. Wonderland itself had only existed in Alice's mind, but to her, it was something that existed without a doubt. Before she had become a monster, Alice had used the Black Rite Grimoire to disseminate as much information as she could, and yet not a single person responded. Perhaps she was doomed from the start, for rumor had it she was a compulsive liar. No one believed her was, therefore, of no surprise. Why did no one believe her? Alice couldn't understand. Alice fixated on one desire, to prove that she had lived. She had dedicated herself so utterly to the code, she absolutely could not die without her life having had meaning. So it was Alice once again used grimoire the black rite of her own creation to appeal to the people the world over. Please believe me, she implored. But since she was now the hollow itself and had no body of her own left, she had to capture visiting sorcerers to sacrifice in her black rites. Yet ironically, in this new form of hers became known as Alice's Wonderland. A name at which sorcerers would tremble. No soul now dares tread near that terrible place. Stray into Alice's wonderland and you are doomed to die. For you will be sacrificed so that she may cry her heart out to the world. And if Alice's mind speaks to you from far away one day, pity the hapless victim. She just claimed as a sacrifice there in her hollow of horrors. There is no cautionary fable. Alice's fate could befall any sorcerer. One might even say that as long as the code exists, there is a wonderland within every sorcerer. There are none now who use grimoire. The black rite of Alice's creation. Grimoire, as many might know, is a world denoting a tomb that instructs sorcerers in the use of magic. This conveyance and dissemination of information, much like Alice's Black Rite, makes such tombs things of exceeding power.